हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे
ఇక మహామంత్రకి శ్రీల ప్రభుపాద్ ఓమ జ్ఞానతి మిరంధస్య జ్ఞానాంజన శలాకయ చక్షుహువన్మీలితం జేన తస్మై శ్రీ గురవే నమ నమా ఓం విష్ణుపాదాయ కృష్ణ పృష్ఠాయ భూతలే శ్రీమతే భక్తి వేదాంతస్వామినితి నామినే నమస్తే సారస్వతే దేవే గౌరవాణే ప్రచారిణే నిర్విశేష శూన్యవాదీ పాశ్చాత్య దేశతారిణే జయ శ్రీకృష్ణ చైతన్య ప్రభు నిత్యానంద శ్రీ అద్వైత గదాధర శ్రీవాసాది గౌరభక్త బృంద హరే కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరి హరే హరే రామ హరే రామ 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 హరే హరే వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఐ హ్యావ్ టేకన్ అవుట్ అ ఫ్యూ స్లైడ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ప్రీవియస్ సెషన్ జస్ట్ డూ ఎ క్విక్ రై క్యాప్ ఆఫ్ ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ స్లైడ్స్ అండ్ దెన్ వీ ప్రొసీడ్ విత్ ద టుడే సెషన్ ఓకే Uh, we see this verse which we discussed last time karpanya dosho pahata swabhavah prichhami tvam dharma sammudha chetah yachreya syan nischitam brohitan me shishyasteham shadhimam tvam prapannam so this was a very important verse therefore i am displaying it again today uh, from the previous uh, session here the first word karpanya dosh actually means uh, a person has become uh, weakened in his duty is called miserly weakness we call it which means just like if a, a rich man uh, for example has abundant money but he is very miserly in spending money similarly somebody is a kshatriya his his duty is to fight the battle but he is shirking away from responsibility putting his bows and arrows aside and uh, feeling uh, weak like a weakling huh? that is actually karpanya dosh similarly in human form of life if somebody is uh, misusing the human body and uh, using the body for um, destructive activities and like smoking and drinking and drugs and everything and not using the human body for emancipation or salvation or returning back to our original spiritual position that is also called as karpanya hmm? failing from duty um, that's the meaning failing in one's duty hmm? so another word used in this verse is dharma sammudha chetaha he says huh? what is the dharma sammudata hmm? actually krishna is telling arjun arjun you surrender to me and i will uh, take care of everything i am the supreme god krishna is addressed by the name bhagavan vacha i explained it in the previous sessions bhaga means opulences bhagavan means one who possesses uh, six opulences in oceanic proportion so krishna is all beautiful uh, he is the husband of the goddess of fortune lakshmi which means all wealth of all the millions of universes belong to him and similarly his beauty is never fading beauty in the battlefield of kurukshetra he is sitting in the chariot he is uh, more than 90 years old proper says some places 125 years he is in the planet but his body looks like a 16 year old boy he is always ever youthful young and youthful hmm? so that means his beauty is never fading wealth is never fading his strength is never fading his fame hmm? and knowledge and ultimately renunciation in all the qualities he has ocean so it's called bhagavan huh? so bhagavan is telling arjuna arjuna um, all the millions of universes spring from me and they all are dissolved by me and taken back into me hmm? so he is supreme god telling him do this battle as a duty your chatri duty but he is arjuna is hesitating so he is telling dharma sammuda chetaha means he has become bewildered and confused about his uh, duty there is one verse in the shrimad bhagavatam which says in this world we all have many duties de varishir bhutapta nanam pitranam na kin karo nayam rini charajan sarvatmanaya sharanam sharanyam tato mukundam parikrta kartam this verse says deva means you have some responsibility to the administrators 
uh, the devatas are demigods of this world because they give you sunlight moonlight rain shower you know growth of the crops uh, wind all these things they are providing us so we have some debt to the demigods from whom we are taking the supplies they were rishi uh, rishi means there are always moralists and sages who teach us the good principles of life how to respect the parents how to conduct ourselves in society and how to live our life by principles and and character huh? so the rishis deva rishir bhuta means the living beings like for example uh, cows give us milk so we have a debt to them uh, and dog protects the house hmm. horses carry us on their back donkeys carry load hmm. so these are all animals domestic animals which do a lot of service so we have a debt to them and also relatives uh, who uh, are our uncle aunt and uh, grandfather grandmother they are all relatives uh, so they are also helping us in uh, difficult situations in life so we have some duty to them hmm? and and also <coughs> nrinam means uh, sometimes you may have a atithi or a guest in your house you have you have a debt to them you know you have to make them feel comfortable give them some prasadam to eat hmm? give them a staying place and uh, so you have some debt to uh, other people also living in society not only the visiting guests because in the whole society people help one another mutually <clears throat> and pitrana means our forefathers who have uh, upheld dharma and they have handed over good values in our lives for our family so we have a debt to all these people deva rishi bhut aapta ranam pitrana i is explained to you the six debts now but he says Now, King Karo and I am Rani Charajan. You have no debt to any of these people if you become Krishna's devotee. Hmm? Like that, this Bhagavatam verse says. It is like saying, in a tree we have to water the leaf, water the twigs, water the branches, water the stem. There are a lot of places in the tree to be watered. But if you put water on the root of the tree, <clears throat> then you don't have to water you know, leaves and twigs and flowers and fruits separately. only one place you have to put the water similarly if you surrender to krishna sarvatmana aya sharanam saranyam gato mukunda parihrita kartam he says if krishna says sarvadarvam paritejya all these duties you can call off you can wave off huh? and surrender only to me krishna says maam ekam saranam if you do this then it is equal to pleasing all of them everybody will be pleased with you hmm? if one becomes uh, surrendered to devotee of krishna everyone else will be satisfied by that he says so Na king karo na yam rini charajan. You are not debtor to anybody, uh, and you are not servant of anybody. If you surrender to Krishna, hmm. so for example, I will explain it with a simple example for you. Hmm. One day I saw <coughs> a car with a red uh, bump at the top, light bulb at the top. Tion you know, tion tion. It was giving sounds. So this car was going in a one-way road in the opposite direction. So I asked somebody, you know. how can this car be allowed to go in a wrong direction they said no 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 these are special ministers cars huh? like chief ministers car or somebody like that you know they are allowed to go in one way also in the opposite direction they can go and they don't have to follow all the traffic rules they have a lot of freedom huh? for these ministers and all so a government the government recognizes uh, that if somebody has rendered lot of service to the country for them it gives many facility like mother teresa you know she was given free flight ticket and free train ticket in any train any flight any bus she wants to go in india she doesn't have to spend a single penny hmm? that kind of freedom uh, the country has given her for her service hmm? so if country can wave off all her transportation charges for teresa the same man krishna says if you surrender to me i wave off all your duties he says huh? duties to all others you don't have to do any duty to anybody if you are doing you are uh, for, for, foremost duty to me uh, he says that's the beauty of this verse huh? so arjuna already has become shishya ste aham he says i am become your shishya huh? which means i am surrender to you uh, please accept me and guide me like the arjuna is surrendering so this was we saw it last time huh? and uh, i showed you these things a man should not die like cats and dogs we should not waste this valuable human form of life like you see in the picture you should not go in a downward spiral of attachment pride fast prejudice ignorance anger envy and all that 
instead of that you should go you should go climbing up so if you go up you are called arya if you are gliding down you are called anarya and arjuna clarified to krishna my dear krishna you are calling me anarya let me tell you i am not anarya uh, i want to be a vedic follower but i want to i am showing sympathy to these foolish people who are very poised to fight the battle i am not anarya krishna uh, i want to be arya i want to be a vedic follower like the arjuna said hmm? now but uh, the main reason for Ar- arjuna suffering last time i showed you see the red box in the top right huh? two aspects of the skin disease or bodily consciousness huh? is one is see, arjuna thinks that i can protect and save the family members from death and the family members can in turn save me like this arjuna is thinking proper writes these two points in the purport huh? proper says so in this world we all surround ourselves by the relatives and think that oh all my relatives are so nice life is like a bed of roses they will take care of me if i have any problem we think and also we also think i will also protect them they will protect me we have put up a very nice family we will live happily we think like that but many times we see hmm, that eventually the grandparents pass away parents pass away one by one everybody passes away in this world and they are not available to protect us eh, or save us although we depend on them they may shelter us emotionally for some time eh? but afterwards they are gone hmm? and for me it's no more a theory because i have seen with my own eyes in my life my amma ma used to say my mother's mother was very dear to us hmm? when we were small children she passed away hmm? later on we saw in front of our eyes my father's father was very dear to us also so he also passed away so we will see and they were like uh, taking us on their laps and giving us embrace and kissing us protecting us so we thought there is we are safe in their hands but one by one all the people go away where are they now huh? therefore we should know one thing this material world is uh, like forming bubbles in a ocean wave huh? the bubbles just uh, burst open after some time they'll be gone huh? so <clears throat> just like in the sky if a dozen birds are flying somebody is shooting one of the birds all the other birds will continue flying huh? you know only one bird will drop dead similarly each of us we are driving our own um, plane mm-hmm. and we are all accountable for our own actions huh? good and bad whatever we do so uh, truly speaking who is protecting all of us if you see god is ultimate person beyond and he is giving us the body he is taking away our body he is putting us in another body and he is witness over all he is the ultimate protector but everybody else is simply as a consequence of their karmic account they are all together so therefore here in the context of the bhagavad gita Arjuna is thinking that if I spare the lives of Bhishma, Drona, and all these people, they will all live. I will also live. We will continue to happily live ever after. But that is not true. They will anyway have to die one day. Huh? When they get older, they have to die. Either they die now or they die later. And in this way, you cannot protect anybody permanently in this world. Huh? So, so we showed this dharma of the soul is to love and serve. so these are eternal loving relationships it's called sanatana dharma we spoke about it last time just like this man has forgotten his parents uh, due to some accident or something similarly we have forgotten our supreme father uh, krishna and we have come to this world and uh, because we have forgotten love to the supreme mother and father radha and krishna then we have love and service for other people which we showed last time uh, now uh, there people are spouse centered people are family centered money centered work work holic work centered position centered pleasure centered pet centered so these are all off centers this is where people are paying their attention to you can see nowadays all these different off centers except god center they are all these are all temporary everything in this list is temporary imagine somebody lost his pet or you know he lost his possessions like uh, costly possessions or he was thrown out of the i mean he was fire, hire, fired from the job people hire and fire nowadays correct no yeah and he lost his money or 
lost in the family members. So he will be totally shattered. Hmm? That's because his center is the wrong center. It is not going to go away one by one by one. So, I showed you this example of Dhritarashtra attached to Duryodhana. Finally, all hundred Gauravas were dead. Hmm. Yeah. So, you will see that in this world, people develop mental attachments and do atrocious activities and they suffer. Hmm. So now, let's go to the next session today, a new session. This is the session for today. Uh, science about yourself, very important session. Mm. So, here is a series of verses from 11 to 30. I have given an outline for you here. Mm. In 11 to 13 and 16 to 25, Krishna brings one essential knowledge that the soul is eternal mm, and uh, the body is changing. Mm. The soul goes from one body to another. That's the main theme in that. And then 14, 15, performance activity must not be affected by happiness and distress arising from sense perception. Here Krishna will tell Arjuna to do the duty, not being carried away by, you know, victory or defeat or pleasure or pain. And even if duty is troublesome, one should do it. That's what Krishna will teach there. And then 26th one, atheistic and materialistic theory. So, even from that point of view, Arjuna cannot run away from duty. Krishna will show that. And 27 to 30, it talks about uh, how temporary body cannot be saved. Body is de destructible. So, you will find in this chapter, 11 to 30 essentially is about you are not the body, you are the spirit soul. Yeah? That's the main thing that's covered. So, in the, after the Arjuna surrenders in 2.7, now Krishna is going to instruct him here. He chastises Arjuna. Truly wise, do not mistake the body to be the self and lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, here this is the verse Krishna says. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Ashochanan Vasho Chastmam Prajnavarashcha Bhashase Gatasu Nagatasumscha Nanusho Chanti Pandita. Uh, Arjuna is selling here. Uh, Ashochan. Uh, Anvasho Chastva. If that which shouldn't be lamented, you are lamenting for that Arjun foolishly. Uh, like that is selling. Uh, 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 so Arjuna is uh, telling that, uh, Krishna is telling Arjun that. Uh, for example, um, if people who think this body is simply a bundle of chemicals, if you throw a bundle of chemicals, are you going to lament for it? Huh? Because every time chemistry lab, somebody throws a jar of chemicals out, nobody is going to cry for it. If you think body is a bunch of chemicals. Or if you know that you are not the body, you are the soul. Soul is a spiritual energy, spiritual personality. He never dies, you know it. At the time of death, the soul leaves the body. Only the body is put in the fire. Then why to lament? Because the real person doesn't die. Either way, there is no reason to lament. Huh? If you agree you are the soul, soul never dies. You cannot cut the soul with scissors or burn the soul with fire. It's an imperishable personality. So you have nothing, no reason to lament. But if you don't know about the soul, you think you are the body. Again, there is no reason to lament. Why? Because you put the body in fire, it's only a bunch of chemicals. Why do you cry for a bunch of chemicals? Every day, chemical laboratory is throwing so much chemicals out, <laughs> isn't it? Either way, there is no reason for lamentation. Like that Krishna is telling. Hmm? Um, a Pandita, a learned person will not lament, he says. So here you will find Krishna takes the role of a guru. He chastises Arjuna uh, and he is teaching him how a learned person should behave. Learned person means you should differentiate between soul and body. That's the main. Body is temporary, soul is eternal. He knows the differences. And when the, when the uh, body dies, so-called death of the body, uh, he understands that the soul is never going to die. Soul is eternal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, regarding the body, it is said, from dust thou art born, from dust thou shalt return, it is said. Huh? Our body is made of mud, mud or is made up of five elements. Mm -hmm. And it just mixes with those five elements. Body is always dead. Even when we are living, also the body is dead. 
See, for example, if I put a gloves in this hand and I'm moving my fingers like this, is the gloves alive at that time? Gloves is never alive. Gloves is always dead. Because of inserting the hand in that, it looks alive. But if I take off the hand, the gloves will fall. Huh? So similarly, this body is even now not alive. Like I'm moving the hand. Huh? From this, you feel my body is alive because the substances in the body, like the flesh and bones and you know all kinds of substances, they are not alive. I am inside this bodily machine, seated in this bodily machine, like a driver sitting in a car. Huh? Therefore, this body is active, doing activities. When I would leave this body, this body will not budge an inch. Huh? So, that is the knowledge a learned person knows. Hmm. Therefore, in conclusion, body is born and destined to be destroyed. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. That is the main point. Hmm. Body is of secondary importance and soul is of primary importance. Hmm. Yeah. So, did I show you the story of four wives last time? Did I show you? Uh, so, in that four wives story, uh, there were three different wives. Uh, one was the wealth and possessions, uh, which will also go away at the time of death. There was another one, uh, relatives and friends, they will also go away at the time of death. Uh, and uh, another third one was uh, one's own body, and that will be taken away at the time of death, it will be burned in the fire. So, the soul has three wives, uh, which means body, relatives and friends and the possessions and wealth, mm -hmm. they will all be gone. The only fourth one, fourth wife is the super soul. Is it? The super soul accompanies the soul mm -hmm. at the time of death. She takes the soul from one body to another. She takes him to the next body. He guides him. So, this, this knowledge is very necessary. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Krishna is going to tell about himself now. Uh, then he is telling uh, to Arjuna, never was there a time and I did not exist, Arjuna. Which means I always existed. Nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be, he is saying. And that means these kings have been existing always. You have been existing, I have been existing. All of us are individuals existing eternally, Krishna is saying. Natve vaham jatu nasam natvam neme janadhipaha nachaivana bhavishyamaha Sarve param. The soul is an individual. He says, Na tu eva aham, jatu na asam. He says that there was never that time when I, I did not exist. I have been always existing, Krishna says. From time immemorial. Yeah, that is the point. Similarly, you are also like that. Soul is eternal, God is eternal, and the relationship is eternal. That is the point he is establishing. Hmm. And then when he goes to the 13th uh, uh -huh. verse, very famous verse it is. Dehe nosmin jatha dehe kaumaram jauvanam jara tatha dehantara praptir dhirastatra namuhyati. As you see in the picture here, yeah, all of our bodies grows from childhood to boyhood, to youth, to old age, and then what remains is only a skeleton. The body drops dead, and the soul leaves the body, and it goes into another body. So, this is what Krishna is teaching here. The soul, even though you may be a little elderly, but your awareness is exactly the same as when you were a small baby. Your awareness, even an 80-year-old man thinks of himself less young person because his awareness is, I am not the body, I am the spirit soul. Mm -hmm. So, somebody asks you, who are you? Most of us will tell our names. Uh, but uh, Dr. Harry Monson says, these are the substances in our body. Calcium, potassium, you know, sodium and magnesium and all these things. Mm -hmm. And he says, in Indian currency, it is not more than 110, all these chemicals. Ask yourself, are you a bunch of these chemicals? That's all, nothing more than that. Uh, is life just a bunch of chemicals? Uh, so, if from a material point of view, people think like this your body is made up of matter, your chemical bundle, everything is finished at the time of death. Even educated people think like that nowadays. They have no idea. But the spiritual understanding, if you see, 
we are not the middle body of flesh and bones that is only a covering over the soul we are spirit soul encased in the middle body we do not die when the middle body stops to function in that connection i want to show you something just one minute They have the same name and boyish good looks. James M. Houston, raised in the Midwest. James M. Leininger, a young boy from the Bayou. Whoa! There's something in the eyes. It's undeniable. That's not all they share. Somehow James Houston's spirit has affected my son either through reincarnation. I don't know how it happened. I can beat the Japanese easiest pie. Initially, um, what caught my attention was James's extreme fascination with airplanes and every night he slept with his GI Joe action figures which he named hey, Walter I took him to the Cavanaugh Flight Museum here's home video while the other kids casually look at the plane two-year-old James seems to inspect it watch as he checks the underbelly then climbs inside donning the headset the pilot put him on I said, oh, look, there's a bomb on the bottom. He said, that's not a bomb, that's a drop tank. Bouncing about in the cockpit, James was flying high. That night, their world would change forever. He started having the nightmares, and that was my first indication that there was something wrong. It was a panic-stricken, terrorized screaming. Over and over again, James had the same terrible nightmare, four to five times a week. He was too young to explain the dream, but he could draw bombing ships you see men parachuting here's another one where planes are dropping bombs Help me. he would just be crying it's the airplane crash on fire a little man can't get out he laid on his back and kicked up at the ceiling and he goes mama the little man's going like this and he laid on his back and kicked his feet up the little man's going ooh 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 can't get out and i said well, who's the little man baby and he goes me i thought bruce and i were just gonna faint they questioned, what kind of plane? Corsair. Why did your airplane crash? My plane was shot down. Who, who shot your plane? He looked at me like I was a village idiot. He said, the Japanese. I kept thinking, where is he getting this? I was a stay-at-home mom, so I know that there wasn't anything that he was being exposed to. Not exposed to in this life, but perhaps... Just maybe somebody else was. Decades earlier, James Houston grew up with the same insatiable fascination with airplanes. He became a naval fighter pilot and fought in World War II. March 3, 1945, during a mission near Iwo Jima, he took a direct hit. At age 21, was declared missing and presumed dead. Where did he take off from a boat? Do you remember the name of your boat? He said, Natoma found uh, several thousand hits on the word Natoma. The USS Natoma Bay launched into battle, headed for Iwo Jima in the fight for Lady Golf. It's the biggest naval battle in the history of the world. Leo Pyatt served on the ship. From his home in Ohio, he organizes the Natoma Bay reunions. That's how Bruce found him. I wanted to disprove it. He asked uh, a few questions about, uh, did I know some of the people? Oh yeah, I remember those people. And. Uh, so he, he got uh, very uh, quiet. It was all real. The people and places James described actually existed. And remember those G.I. Joe dolls that James named? Turns out, three men with the same names, first and last, served on the Natoma and were killed in action. James said they greeted him in heaven after his crash. I'd always asked him, do you remember what your name was? And he always said James. But his name is James. Yes, there was a Jim Houston, or rather large shell. Just hit him in the, the engine and it burst into flames and, and went down. They showed Leo the drawings. He was uh, right on the nose. I'm sure, in my mind, that he was there. Leo invited James, now three, to the reunion. James recognized several pilots, even called them by name. You're Bob Greenwald. <laughs> I'm serious. And he'd never met Bob Greenwald. No, he'd never met him before. And someone else was invited. James Houston's sister, Anne. And he goes, uh, it's not Anne, it's Annie. She wasn't my oldest sister. I had an older sister than that. 
And I said, you did? Who was that? And he goes, Ruth. I mean, Ruth. Eddie is what they called me when I was little, knowing my name and my sister's name, the things that my brother did when he was a kid. It's too amazing to describe how he would feel that, that way, but he does. He considers me his sister. But does she consider James her brother? I think it's probably a reincarnation of my brother. Suzanne Stratford, Fox 8 News. So, I have some questions to you all. Um, what is one thing, Sunit, what, do you, what did you infer from this video? Sunit. Uh, from this video, I can say that the soul never dies, only the body, it changes the body from one body to another. Correct. Yeah, thank you. So that uh, is. I just have one more question. Like, I read this 12 and 13 verses today morning. Okay. Like, I do my readings every day. So, they have mentioned about some Mahavidyas, Mahavedis, or something which contradicts these existence. Like, they contradict this Bhagavad uh, Gita in some like spiritual. Which, uh, which, which also. book did you read? What was the book? Yeah, Bhagavad Gita only. There is verse 12 and verse 13. So it is a very long description in that, in the English as well as Hindi. I read both both of them together. So this 12 and 13, they have said some ma Mahish, I don't remember the name, it starts from Mahavidas or something like that. So they contradict this uh, Bhagavad Gita teachings, like in soul and spirit. So I, I'm just confused because I wanted to ask at the end, but I just thought... Okay, so who, who says it contradicts? Who says that? So... It's, I have to see the book again because it's Maha, Mahavedyas or Mahavedyas, it's written in the description. Like oh. they contradict this oneness. Ah, correct. I will, I will explain that. I didn't uh, elaborate about that point, Natve Vaham Jatanasam. That was, Prabhupada has very beautifully described it. Hmm? Because Krishna says, Natve Vaham Jatanasam, Natvam Na Ime Janadipaha. He says, Arjun, Myself, yourself, and all these kings, there was never a time when we did not exist. That means we always have existed, Krishna says. Uh, now, somebody may say, you know, Krishna is just talking about the body. But then it doesn't pertain to body because the bodies are perishable. You know, like uh, only Krishna's body is permanent. Arjuna's body will perish, the king's body will perish. So, this is not talking about the body. This is talking about the souls. Uh, and he says that all these souls, and then you, Arjuna, and myself, we all are individuals, Krishna says. And we have always existed from the past, and we will always continue to exist. And there is never a time when we will all merge and become one supreme Brahman or something. Huh? We all will be separate. So, impersonalist Mayavadis, uh, uh, for them, this verse is a verse which defeats their understanding. Huh? Because they, they will not be able to comprehend this verse because here Krishna very clearly says that every jiva in this world is my part and parcel. 15.7 you can refer Bhagavad Gita. Mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. He says, Mama yeva amsho, all these jivas are my amsha only, Krishna is telling. Um, they are all my amsh or my part and parcel, Arjun. They exist, I exist, you exist, we all individually existed long before. We are existing now and will exist forever. Like that he says. So, there is no merging. Uh, yeah? Sorry, yeah. Uh, Mayavadis, yeah. The Mayavadis are impersonalists who claim that they are ultimately all the souls are now parts now, but ultimately they will merge into God and become God. So, God is ultimately one, like that they say. The Mayavadis understanding is Advaitis, Advaitis, we call it. Yeah. Advaita Siddhanta, yeah. See, the, the truth is what? God is like a gold mountain and we are like a small golden ornament. Huh? For example, if you are wearing a earring or a nose ring made of gold, that is also gold. Mountain is also gold. So, we are same. But this quantity is small, that quantity is big. Similarly, God is like an ocean, I am like a drop of water. But if you take a drop of water, the drop of water cannot uh, wreck a ship. Uh, the drop of water 
does not have sharks. The drop of water does not have waves. So, these are all dissimilarities between the drop of water and the ocean. And the similarity is the percentage of salt in the water and the percentage of salt in the ocean is same. And that is, that is similarity. So, there are similarities between God and the soul and there are dissimilarities between God and soul. So, in quality, God and soul are one. But in quantity, we are different. So, this is called as Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. So, the Advaita is also correct, Dvaita is also correct. And synthesizing both, Lord Chaitanya taught Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, simultaneous oneness and difference. Like that. For example, take a branch of a tree, you know, which has leaves and flowers. Now, the branch of a tree is one with the tree and at the same time it is separate from the tree. Why? For example, if I take you to a tree in the garden, I show you a flower, I ask you, what is this? You will say, it's a flower. Okay, what is this? It's a leaf. What is this? It's a branch. You will say, what is this? It's a stem. But what is totally it's called as? It's called as tree. Like that you say. Similarly, absolute truth is Krishna, God, but we are all his part and parcels and we have our identities separately. Imagine if I am showing a flower and I ask somebody, what is this? Somebody says tree. Flower is not tree. Flower has its identity. Branch has its identity. Leaf has its identity. So they all are simultaneously one with the tree and they have the separate identity also. Similarly, all of us jivas, we are all tiny children of God, but we are one with God in quality and different in quantity. So this, this completely resolves all misconceptions of Dvaita, Advaita, Vasishta, Advaita, 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 you know, Shuddha, Advaita and all those different philosophies. So, by understanding the quantity and quality aspect. Is it clear, Sunil? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. So, anybody else wishes to tell me about what you observed in the video? Any of you? Anybody else in the participants? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Realized, uh, you carried the imprints and uh, uh, consciousness from previous life. Correct, yeah. And in the uh, story of James, you observed that, correct, no? And James actually, you, even as a small child, he could recognize the planes and the different parts of the plane and he was naming them and all that. Hmm? Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Any of you? From any other, I have, because other attendees, your videos are not on. So, I want to be sure that you watch the video and you understood something. You can uh, tell me what did you understand, yeah? Anybody hand up? Yeah? You can put gallery. Gallery. Want to see. Gallery, gallery view. So, because I have been proceeding with these sessions one after another, I want to be sure that there is some understanding. If nobody speaks, I can't be sure whether we, you are with me. Hmm? How can I be confident that you are catching the subject? Anybody else? Is it, what is that? Balla, Rev, Revan, Revanath Balla, Upen, Lavesh, Kaurav, Ajink, huh? Ajink, Jacob also is here today, Jacob Anderson, yeah. And, okay, that is Sanmuk, Yash, Laura, Rohan, Sandeep, Vikas, Himanshu, Jita Mandel. Yes, who is speaking? This is Yash, um, Ah, yeah. Yes, yeah, how did you find the video? Something useful from the video, what you understood? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was reading this book, uh, right? Uh, I think uh, it goes with the similar process. Like, I was reading about karma and uh, and it's Hinduism, right? And even last week when I was reading the book, it had the similar similarities as in like, there, there's most, sometimes, even the scientists, right? Um, most of the scientists can, cannot explain that, why this is happening, right? Like, okay, sometimes you'll see like, people are, 
when they when they're uh, leaving this uh, body, right? Uh, they might have some undesired wishes mm. that can carry over to the next birth as well, right? Correct. And, uh, I think that something I was able to capture in yeah. this video. I've, I've read like close to six to seven examples uh, of that just in uh, last week when I was reading a book about karma and, and Hinduism. Correct. And uh, it had similar, you know, um, um, you know um, examples like that. Yeah. And uh, scientists were not able to explain that. And, and finally, they had to point everything towards the, uh, India. Like, okay, the Indians, like Hindus, believe in reincarnations and, and all of that, right? Uh, and the three types of karma, like, Sanchit, Sanchit, something and... Uh, yeah, correct. Two other ones. But if they say it uh -huh. is only pertaining to India, now we are hearing about James, who is not born in India. Correct. You know, uh, you, uh, I mean, the, scientifically, they were not able to explain uh, the meaning towards yeah. it. So they're like, they're pointing towards like, uh, Hindus, like, hey, Hindus have explained this uh, previously in the past. So this might point to this, right? Because yeah. science is all about, you know, not believing God or... We believe in like <laughs> what we see, what we are able to prove. Right? But uh, see here, in the video which I showed, we didn't uh, bring anything about God in that. If you see, okay. we are just showing that James died in a plane crash and then there is another James who is appearing in another family and now he is able to recognize his old sister Annie. Huh? He is uh, calling her as a sister but she is a old woman and she says that, oh, he knows everything about me exactly as a brother would know. But only thing is, he is a small boy now. So, she considered him like her brother and he considered her sister, although she is like an old lady now, isn't it? Huh? So, you can easily see that the soul in the body of the pilot, James, it has left and then gone into the body of the new, newly born boy, James. Huh? That means the soul is an intersecting point between the previous body and the current body. Huh? Like set A, set B, the intersecting element is soul. Because the information, the soul uh, covered with the mind, it is carrying from the previous life and coming into the next body. Is that clear to you, Yash? Is that point clear? Yes, yes. At the time yes. of death, the dead body, gross body lies down and the, and the soul with the mind comes out and now it carries, goes to the next body. So, in the mind, the remembrance of the previous body is there and that's how the soul is able to recollect. Now, I was in that, uh, you know, Natoma flight, you know, there was a Japanese people shot the plane and it crashed and I died. I could not come out of the flight. All that he remembers, uh, everything is stored in the mind. Mm -hmm. And the next life, he could uh, recollect, I mean, names of the plane and even the many pilots' names he recollected, the boy. So, why am I showing all of you these kind of videos? Because it helps you to understand that reincarnation is not something pertaining to only Hinduism. It is happening for all living beings including you and me. We all were in some particular body and you left that body and now we have occupied another body. So, in this way we are all moving from one body to another. Body is only the address and the soul is different from the body. That is the lesson we are learning. So, Sunit, you are in New York. Where are you? Sorry, Sunit is in... I am in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Michigan. And uh, Yash is in which place? Yash Patel? You can unmute yourself. Sorry, I was speaking. Yeah, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Where is it? What is the name of the place? Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you. So, anybody else wishes to say anything else? Or you have any doubts? It was a very scientific phenomenon, therefore I showed you the video. It's from a discovery channel, hmm? which I showed you. Anybody else wishes to say anything? Okay, now let us see further. See this material point of view, people think like this. Look at this. That we are just body made up of matter. We are simply a chemical bundle. Everything is finished at death. People think like this. Huh? Whereas spiritual point of view, if you see, uh, in Gita, Lord Krishna says, no, 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 you are not the material body made of flesh and bones. You are actually a spirit soul encaged in the material body. Like a bird is put in a cage. Like that the soul is put in these bodies. And the soul never dies. We don't die when the body stops to function. Uh, we are seated in this bodily machine. You know, some people think, I am the body and I have got a soul, people think. Is it true? <laughs> not that you are the body or the soul. Body is... 
uh, a, a car and you are the driver of the car. The soul is the driver of the bodily car. Uh, that is the correct understanding. Uh, which means the body is like apartment and the soul is the resident of the apartment. Body is like a cage, soul is a resident of the cage. Uh, similarly, the body is like a car, we are driver of the car. That is the correct understanding. Uh, not that I, I am the body and I have got a soul. You have not got a soul, you are the soul. And that point is it clear to everybody? Yeah. So, this is spiritual viewpoint, what you are seeing here. Hmm? In every body, there is a pure spirit soul. And this is what I told you. As a bird is trapped in a cage, the soul is trapped in the body made of earth, water, fire, air, ether. Huh? Yeah. And not knowing that I am uh, different from the cage, bodily cage, people are all spending so much time for the body. Huh? All of you think for a moment. What all man does for his body? Think about it. Huh? Like pe people are, how much they are conscious of the jeans, conscious of the t-shirt, conscious of their watch, conscious of the shoes. Hmm? People are shoe conscious, belt conscious, jeans conscious, hairstyle conscious, beard conscious, except Krishna conscious. Hmm? They have all other consciousness. You can see that. Hmm? That's because of identification. with the. So here I am going to show you a few ways to scientifically prove the existence of the spirit soul. Hmm? You will see, let us begin with common sense. If somebody has passed away, people say, that, Oh, she has passed away. Where has she passed away? She is very much here. Hmm? But her soul has passed away. Hmm? Soul from their body has passed away. Intuitively, people understand it. Hmm? Similarly, you can see this man and woman, they remember the happy old memories. Hmm? Uh, well, with their emotions they remember. On the other hand, if you see this, you know, sensor camera, I see red light, it says, it has no consciousness, it's, it's dead matter. If you make the machine say, I see blue light, it will see red light and say, I see blue light, it will say. It has no consciousness. Huh? Like a robo. Robo does activity, it's a dead machine. Huh? It's a mechanical arrangement, it has no consciousness at all. Whereas in a living body, there is consciousness. All of you think for a moment, Three things you can think inside of yourself. Uh, every one of you, you want to live forever. You don't want to die. And you want to experience more and more happiness. And you want more and more knowledge. These three things we all are looking for. Ever increasing knowledge, ever increasing happiness, ever increasing lifespan. You don't want to die. You, if your soul is present in your body, then only you will have these three feelings. Huh? Otherwise, you won't, you won't have at all. Hmm? Yeah. Similarly, externally, you can perceive, you can do mental activity and you can, you know, you can also take purposeful action. These three are three external. For example, I see gulab jamun, eyes are seeing, mind is thinking my experience of the gulab jamun and hand picks up and puts in the mouth. So, perception, mental, mental activity and purposeful action. These three are external activity. And three internal are, I want to live forever, I want increasing knowledge, I want increasing happiness. Six total, I told you. Three internal, three external ways to prove the soul. Hmm? Only so, soul's presence makes the body, I mean, makes us think, feel, will and all that. Hmm? See, here something is uh, uh, presented here, very special thing. You know, it's called uh, out-of-body experience. Hmm? Yeah, sometimes people have had the experience, not one or two. The point and now 14 percent is saying, 11 percent to 14 percent of the average American population who are mentally and physically healthy have had OBE, is saying. So, out of body experience, uh, medical journal says that. Which means people have gone out of the body and looking at their own body, lying on the bed. As a spirit, they have done that. And how do we know this? In 1996, there was a publication by Reader's Digest, a book called as Into the Unknown. In that book I read, they put a person in the bed, in the loft, they keep some triangular prism, cylindrical object and everything. And they ask him to go out of the body, observe them and come back and do a drawing. And exactly they have drawn it, huh? what they have seen. That means the body is not climbing up in the top, body is lying on the bed. But the soul comes out of the body, is able to observe it and come back into the body and then draw it. It's called out-of-body experience. Huh? So, and there is also near-death experience. When a person is about to die, sometimes, uh, a person is uh, about to leave his body uh, by some accident or something. And the uh, doctors have seen that 
the person has you clearly heard what nurses were talking. Although brain waves are flat, eh? still he has been able to observe. See, so many books are written. You can see these books. Eh? Out of body experience, near death experience. So many books have come out now. Hmm? This is Dr. Ryan Stevenson. He has researched uh, in the University of Virginia. He is a professor of psychiatry. Hmm? More than 3,000 cases he has published. He got a doctorate thesis for his good work on reincarnation. Hmm? That is. See, reincarnation, so many books. Huh? Reincarnation research, hundreds of books have come out now. Like old man is going to the door and coming out as a small child. Hmm? Similarly, all of us leave one body and we take another body. Hmm? Also, Ian Stevenson has published in his thesis, he says that the phobias are related to the previous life uh, mode of death also. Uh, here you see this girl is afraid of water. Because in previous life she died in water. Huh? So then in the next life they have phobia for ocean, phobia for water. Similarly, if somebody died with a bladed weapon, they have, uh, as soon as they see blade, they will freeze, they will scream. Huh? They have fear. Similarly, if somebody died by firearms or gun, then whenever they see gun, now they develop a irritation phobia. For that. So Ian Stevenson found there is a direct correlation between the fear in this life and the mode of death in the previous life. He found that. Here look at the twins. They are born from the same egg or we can say same, what do you call it, uh, genes. Uh -huh. If genes are same, looks are same, the quality should be same but it is not. How many of you experience that you know some twins whose behavior is totally different, opposite? Although they are born from the same egg, same twins. And then he says this goes to show that there are two different souls reincarnated in two different bodies. Huh? Otherwise, how these two boys who are twins have different behavior? Hmm. Now, scientifically, you cannot explain that. Therefore, uh, clearly it becomes valid that two different souls have entered the body. Therefore, they behave in two different ways. Hmm. Here is a case study of Dr. Ryan Stevenson. Uh, one girl called Shukla remembered her past life and uh, they took her to the village. And she could recognize her house exactly. And also, she recognized her father-in-law, her husband. 30 people she recognized. And she took lead. You can see that in the picture. She showed everything to people. Come with me, I'll show you where I lived. What did, everything she recollected. Sitting in the chair, she is recollecting more names of more than 30 people in her village. So This is a published article by Ian Stevenson. All these great uh, personalities have said that uh, they have firm faith in reincarnation. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Socrates, all of them. You can see their quotes also. Uh, yeah, they are talking about the reincarnation of the soul uh, from one body to another. You will see hmm, people fight, you know, there are Hindu Muslim fight, there is fight between uh, blacks and whites and all that. These are all bodily consciousness. So, here you can see these quarrels, rich and poor, educated, illiterate, you know, sinful, ugly. But you will see these are bodily consciousness. But what unites us, you will see all over the world, 120 countries came to Calcutta and they celebrated Hadnam Sankirtan. Uh, so, uh, this is the first time in the whole world, in the Guinness Book of World Record, it is mentioned. 120 country people came and all of them came with their flags and they chanted Hare Krishna. So, in this way, Srila Prabhupada has united the whole world on soul consciousness. And in the bodily consciousness, people are increasing wars and fights and everything. Therefore, we don't want to be bodily conscious, we want to be soul conscious. Yeah. Then we can have universal brotherhood. See what this man is thinking. One of you read this. What is this? Yeah. Any of you who is not on video, can you please read it? I don't hear. I don't. I don't see any sound coming from others. You know, our others like Upen, Lavesh, Ajin, Sandeep Reddy, Rohan. 
Okay, you read. I have put uh, millions of US dollars in the Swiss bank account so that even my son cannot touch my money. Now, whether I am behind bars or moving around in cars, I have no money. It's all my money. <laughs> so, a common man thinks like this. Huh? But here you see what he thinks. I read it. Are you ready? Yeah. Look at the cows. They are suffering without food. Let me arrange some grass for her. Every living being is like my brother and sister. Every creature, creature deserves to live. If I can preach to a few rich men of my country, I will teach them the culture of sharing all resources of the supreme intelligence amongst all his creatures. Then there will be no poverty in our country. Yeah. So, See the different attitude. Uh, actually, when you see all living bodies as spirit souls seated in different bodily machines, you can feel sympathy for them. Uh. So, uh, now once you answer that, then it becomes clear why am I suffering? What is the goal of life? Uh. See, here Krishna says, Vasam Sijiran, a very famous verse. Uh. Vasam sijirnani yata vihaya navani grihnati naroparani tata sharirani vihaya jirnani anyani samjati navani dehi. He is telling uh, that you are the soul, your body is just like a shirt. As a person puts on new dresses, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new metal bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. Even here you see, childhood to youth, boyhood to youth, to old age, the body is changing. But the soul never changes. Same soul is present. Like uh, that he is saying. Like here you see, cycle to bike, to car, and airplane. Like that a person changes the vehicles. Uh, moving from one vehicle to another. Like that the soul changes bodies. Yeah. What is the state of being one remembers at the time of quitting the body? That state he attains Arjun. Like the Krishna is telling, what body I will get? You will get that body based on uh, at the time of death, whatever thoughts are in your mind uh, that are accrued by your whole life of in you know, a certain attitude and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. See how the soul is wandering. Based on what you desire and what good and bad karma you have. Accordingly, the soul wanders in different, different bodies. Yeah. Yeah, we all reap our own fruits. Accordingly, we get the body. Some karmas come instantly, some come little delayed like apple. It doesn't produce apple immediately, it gradually produces delayed. So, the law of karma says that in human body, you can live a life virtuously or viciously. Yeah. If you live virtuously, you get good fruits. Otherwise, like here you see, sinful life. If somebody is unnecessarily causing torture to the poor creatures by eating meat, or if somebody is into intoxicants, like you see here, or somebody is into gambling, somebody is into illicit connections. So, these four things are counted as sinful activities. They bind us. They will trap us in one more body by these activities. They are gliding down, you see, ignoring God's laws. Mm. Yeah, into even animal body sometimes. Mm. Like here you see, this person is eating flesh and drinking blood, preparing the consciousness of a tiger to take the tiger's body in the next life. This fellow is sleeping too much, he is preparing the body of a polar bear, you see. Mm. Somebody is exposing the body just for making money. Then a person becomes a tree where he can expose the body. Hmm. So, for following God's laws, one should do hmm, associating with saintly people, reading the Gita and all that. A very simple formula we have said. Please read it, Sunit. A for. A for association, A for books, C for chanting, E for diet, E for engagement, Seva. Yeah. Easy to remember, not this ABCD. Yeah. Then we go up, 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 up. 
And then we go back home back to God by that. Krishna says that the great souls return back to me. They will not be suffering in this material world. So, next time when we come, we will discuss more on this. I will leave it here because uh, we have almost, uh, our time is up. We have finished up to 47 slides. We will continue that from this 13th slide onwards, we will continue next time. Okay. Thank you all very much. Shri Prabhupada ki. One last point I wanted to say, all those of you who are not on video, my humble request to you, even if you don't want to put video due to some reason you are eating or something, it's all right. Um, but you should speak at least a few words. Mm -hmm. So if you speak, I can be confident that you are you are awake and you are attending the program. Mm -hmm. As if you don't speak, I think sometimes people switch on the Zoom and they go away. They, they are not listening. Mm -hmm. So, Jacob, how did you find it? I thought it was good. I actually commented several times in the chat. Okay. Like, uh, there's a bunch of stuff there that I put in. Okay. I actually asked questions too. Okay, very good. So, you found the knowledge of the soul and versus body connection very clear? Uh, yeah, I mean, because I've done past life regression, which is something I mentioned in the chat. And uh, actually, I had a really hard time with it until I did a program called Meta Naughty, which helps with past life regression and it helps uh, okay. like make it more orderly. Okay. So I've experienced that. And then I said about... Uh, Indigo children, which are, there was a case of a kid not that long ago who had memories of uh, being in the buildings during 9-11. Uh-huh. Like he, he, yeah, he was scared of airplanes and stuff. Like, he, yeah, it was a, not that long ago. Hmm. Correct. <laughs> so, see, many people do... Uh, regression and all, past life regression and things like that they do. But the information from Bhagavad Gita is very authentic information. Sometimes people who do regression, they may be able to partially come to know. But the complete information we get in the Gita. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And as we proceed, it will become more and more clear. Thank you, Jacob. Anybody else wishes to say? Anybody else? I can't see. Typing. Gallery. Yeah, please repeat again. No, yeah. I'm reading really, uh, every day, really, but I'm not able to read the Sanskrit verses because uh, I'm not that much perfect in Sanskrit. That's not a problem. So, Actually, over a period of time, these verses will become easy for you. Huh? As you keep reading the yeah. Gita a little bit, there's a transliteration available in the Bhagavad Gita as it is. You have it with you. So, after every verse, there's a transliterated verse in English. So, go to the back side of Gita, it teaches you how to use the diacritic marks and how to read it. Like if you put a A okay, and put, if you put a line over it, ah, like that you have to read it. So, just wanted to know like, uh, if I am making mistakes while reading in Sanskrit, so will it have negative effect or is it no, okay, no, like no, no. Learned, learned, learned. no, 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 it won't have negative effect. Gita verses are very simple. Uh, even if you commit a little mistake, no problem in the beginning, eventually it will get better. And there's a Sanskrit pronunciation guide in the back side of the Bhagavad Gita, towards the end in appendix. You can also go through that. Huh? Okay. So thank you. Thanks thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.